news, big news, gentlemen. Uh, KJ, uh, what's your instant reaction to Ten Hag staying? Oh, it's finally over. It's finally over. This has been the longest season review I have ever seen in my life. Um, but we've got to a conclusion now, and that's the main thing as Man United fans is that we now know where we stand. We now know where we stand, which is Ten Hag staying. For many of us, that is at the start at the start of this process, it would have been sack him straight away. As the review went on, as time went on, you see the people that we're linked to, the targets that we're linked to, it very quickly became, yeah, you know what? You, you, you got to stay. You got to stay. If it's not for a tutorial, if you're not actually going to take a risk on De Zerbi or McKenna, then Ten Hag, he, he's got to stay and he's staying. And as someone who's, who wanted him to see him gone do for, for, for many reasons, I'm not overly vexed. I'm not saying this is over. My main thing is, is that now that we've got the manager secured and we know what we're going to do, let's actually now start building as a team, as a club. Let's go out there and get the players that Ten Hag says he needs to play the football that he needs to play. Because that's one thing he said. We are, I, I ain't got the players to play Ajax style. I ain't got the players to play a better brand of football. Well, with these new recruitment guys now, with Wilcox, with Barada, with Ashworth come in, let us go get this guy players that actually can play better football and see what he's made of. He's won two trophies in two years, and I commend him for that. Absolutely commend him for that. Now it's time to see if you can now evolve from what you've been showing us the last two seasons and make us contend for the Premier League and the Champions League. That, that, those are the aims. Those are the aims. So, as a United fan, I'm, I'm, I'm neither jumping over the moon, but I'm not down in the pits. I'm like, okay, cool. Now let's go build. Let's go rebuild this club and let's go again. And who knows? Now with this stability, the players that we've been linked to might look at it and be like, yo, they kept their manager yeah. who, who's won them trophies. And then we want a bit of that, you know? So we'll see, man. We'll see. But hey, as long as he changes it, Terry, I'll say this last part. <laughs> yeah, not even to head coach is huge. Now, if he can handle that new role, that's brilliant for Man United. That's brilliant for the Ineos. That's brilliant for everyone, right? But the key part is the style of play. If Wilcox is coming in and saying we're playing a certain style, Terrick Ten Hag has to fulfil that. No longer do we want to see a island in midfield, a polo in midfield. We need to. We can't see that no more. We want to see a better structure defensively. We want to see a better structure going forward. More fluid attacks. More goals. Less goals conceded. And I guarantee you, anyone who was Ten Hag out will happily revert into being Ten Hag again. Absolutely. Um, Neeks, uh, what's your take on this, bro? Oh, by the way, where are you, bro? You look somewhere really good. I am in... Oh, sorry. I'm in Trinidad and Tobago. Nice. Yeah, I, did, I, knew, yeah. I can tell you were not in England with that sunshine, <laughs> bro. You're not here. Yeah, nice. Um... I mean, yeah, it's warm. It's it's rainy season. It's like the rainy season, so it's been pelting it down earlier. But it's warm. The cricket's tomorrow. West Indies against New Zealand. So yeah, I'm here for the cricket, and then I fly over to St Lucia on Friday for some more cricket. So um, nice, I hope you I hope you got the good weather like I did. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been raining today. It's been raining, uh, but. I don't know. What do you make of this news, bro? I know you've never been someone that's been sort of on the back of Ten Hag. Mm. What do you make of him staying? I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm so happy. Happy New Year, as Pep Guardiola would say. Um, no, for me, I, and I've said it for a while, the only way I would be happy about changing manager this day, especially after winning the second, uh, winning, winning the FA Cup. Even before that, I was already... Is that music in the background a bit too loud for you? Look? I can move. It's a little bit loud, yeah. Okay, let me but, move. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's right, right. But yeah, I think for me, yeah, the only way I would, I would have been happy with Ten Hag uh, being replaced is if the manager option was a clear upgrade. So for me, as I said before, CV. What have you got on your CV? Have you got a Champions League? Have you won a Premier League? What's your credentials? And for me, the options other than Tuchel were looking very bleak. It was Deserby, it was Southgate, um, 
it was McKenna. And I was so underwhelmed by those that in the end, I was like, no, nah, I'm in the end, I was happy for um for Ten Hag to stay because if the other option was Southgate, the other option was McKenna, then for me, a manager who's won two in two years, what is what's the odds on that next managerial appointment, other than if it's a clear upgrade in terms of their history, what is the odds on it the next manager be better? There's no evidence to suggest other than just well, let's mm. hope and pray. Southgate, Southgate is hope and pray. The Zerbi is hope and pray. So I'm happy that we haven't made a sideways and potential backward step, which I think a lot of those managed options would have been. Am I happy that Ten Hag stayed? I'm happy under the circumstances, but I'm not necessarily happy as a Man United fan because to finish eighth and not be challenging for Premier League in the last couple of years and the football has been was dire in the last season, I can't be happy with that. But I'm damn sure happier than I could have been if the worst came and England, you know, let's say England won the world, um, the, the Euros. Southgate goes out in a blaze of glory and, and any else are like, yes, that's the man we want. I would have been absolutely fuming. So for me, Ten Hag, and, and I'll probably go into a bit more detail as the show goes on, but for, ten, for me, Ten Hag has, it's, his position has been chosen by Ineos. They've gone through whatever review, they've decided X, Y, Z. Maybe there was a specific manager who they thought, mm, that's the one we actually want. But after all the interviews and all the discussions, they've decided, no, we're going to continue with Ten Hag. And they're talking about a potential contract extension. Um, I'm, I'm very content with that. It doesn't mean the pressure's off. The expectations are still going to be there. He needs to deliver, he needs to improve. Um, but I tell you, yeah, I said it could be a damn sight worse than keeping Ten Hag. So I'm happy right now. Yeah, look, I said all along I was going to be sort of objectively supportive of the decision, but I am happy it hasn't. It's not Southgate. There are a few other candidates we were linked to. Listen, I know he's got a better CV, but I wasn't overly infused by the idea of Thomas Tuchel. There's something about it where I don't think it's going to work out. Where Deserve would have had me more excited, but what I do think is interesting about this, and we know what the media are going to say. The media are going to sort of suggest this is what's going to come out in the papers in the next few days. Because the media have been kept in the dark, absolutely kept in the dark, and that's going to trigger them. So obviously what's happened today is the, cl- the club have obviously given some information to, to David Ornstein. No other journalist knew about it, and they've said he's staying. The media will start to twist it into United shat the bed last minute. United uh, could land their targets, so they've been forced into staying with him. I don't think that's true in any capacity. I think we have, for the first time in a decade, we have completed genuine due diligence. We have been methodical. We have un, you know, overturned every single stone. Yes, there may have not have been other candidates that we prefer available, but that's nobody's fault. That's not shit in the bed. That's not making a mistake. I think they've reviewed the manager market. They've looked at the manager they've got, the changes they're bringing in. They've interviewed and spoken to a lot of people and said, for now and the direction we're going in, this is the best option for us. And I'm like I've said, it's not what I would have done. I still probably would have moved on from him for a speedier progression, but it's not about what I want. It's about saying I trust the individuals that are now running our club. So I'm going to be cool. I'm going to be calm and collected about it, and let's see what happens. And as KJ said, if, he starts, if we get some good players this summer, I want to see no excuses next year for the style of play not being better. We saw at the end of last season, and the good thing about it being Ten Hag is not that we want to have no patience, but I don't think it should take as long for us to see further improvements because we made changes towards the end of last season and we saw better shape, harder to break down. We won our last three games, which led to a trophy, which nobody expected us to win. By right this summer, which we're hopeful that we will do, And I want to see a massive marked improvement on how we play and how we operate. What I will say about Ten Hag is I don't want to see any whinging or moaning from him because he's accepted his fate, which is that he is no longer the manager and he's the head coach. We know that's a setup that we're going with. And I I just want to see him kind of crack on and get on with that as an example. So, look, from my point, someone here, Terry, stop fooling. I want to say this, and Neeks will remember this because he's been around long enough and probably KJ. When people like Red Red Cam say this to me, part of me thinks it might be a troll. Then I think maybe it's someone new. But the due diligence element, this stuff I've been calling out for the best part of a decade. 
for the best part of a decade, I've been calling this stuff out where Manchester United don't... In the first instance, the player looks great. Oh, I like this player or I like this manager or I like this approach we're going with. And then it all goes to, to pot. And then all the truth starts to come out surrounding the situation. And we all look at it and go, well, why did we even hire X, Y, or Z? Why do we make this decision? Why do we do this? How have we not done our due diligence on the situation? So the fact that we didn't rush this process, we interviewed people, we've taken our time, that fills me with so much more confidence. And to answer your point, Red, because we have not done this before. And that's why the United fans panicking so far this in this very short summer thus far have confused me because we're suddenly acting completely different to how we've seen in the last decade. That should fill you with so much more hope. doesn't mean we're back and we're going to win the league next year, but it should fill you with hope that we're going to start moving in, in, in the right direction. But that's just, that's just my view on it. We know the media is going to come for us now, but that's, that's, that's typical from this point.